This is an interesting case and one that you could see in your office every day. We've got significant decay on the mesial of this second bicuspid and major decay on the distal of the cuspid. Now, cuspid, I performed endo on these two teeth. That's not in this video. It's going to be in another video. This video is on crown preparations of these two teeth. And these are the final restorations here and here. Please click on the blue link in the description below and subscribe to DentistryMasterClasses.com. There's a video library of multiple restorative cases, endo cases, full mouth reconstructions, increasing vertical dimension in full mouth reconstruction, TMJ, myofascial pain, surgery, wisdom teeth, apicoectomies, you name it. Subscribe to DentistryMasterClasses.com. Okay, so you can see the decay here and all the decay here. So both those teeth are going to receive endodontics and crowns. In this video, we're just talking about the crowns. You can link to how to give a painless and profound injection in the li video library in dentistrymasterclasses.com. The intraligamental injection is so important. You can link to how to place a rubber dam easily. This technique of placing a rubber dam takes about 15 seconds. You'll start using the rubber dam on everything because it makes your life so much easier and the patient is so much more comfortable because they're not having to worry about water in their mouth or pieces of filling and etc flying around in their mouth. So the first thing I'm doing is depth cuts with a 330 carbide burr and I want to reduce the occlusal about a millimeter and a half or two. I'm also going to remove that gold inlay and I'm cutting it in two and then just torquing it. Now, this is another great reason to have a rubber dam. When that popped out, it's contained. Everything is contained in the rubber dam. You don't have to worry about water or pieces of anything falling in the patient's mouth. So it takes aspiration away. So you can see all the decay here and all the decay here. So we're not going to go through the endo in this video. That's another video. And the endo technique I'm teaching you is fantastic because you only use one drill. It's the Brazilier real world endo system. You will be using that system. So occlusal reduction to the depth of the depth cuts. And I always, I normally prep the teeth for crowns and remove all the decay before performing the endodontics just because I've got that behind me and we're finished with the, the tooth part once we finish the endo. This is just a mosquito diamond for the interproximal cuts. You want to be careful not to touch the adjacent teeth. And this is a coarse barrel diamond for the facial preparation. Now I'm taking the facial preparation <coughs> I'm taking the facial preparation to the gingival line in about a half a mill half a millimeter or a millimeter into the sulcus probably halfway into the sulcus, not to the bottom of the sulcus because you don't want to take a chance on invading the biologic width or the junctional epithelium connection. On the lingual, many times there's a big super bulge. Well, if you prepped the lingual all the way down subgingivally, you'd have to reduce a ton of tooth structure to make it draw. So many times I'll only prep part way down the lingual to the zenith of that super bulge so that I don't have to reduce all that tooth structure. And this is the coarse diamond, barrel diamond. Now this is a flame shaped fine diamond. Now interproximally I'm just going to barely go subgingival. Don't go very subgingival because you don't want to uh, impinge upon the periodontal fibers. They're very dense interproximally. And the flame shaped or the fine chamfer diamond. Go to this link. These are the provisional restorations. These are not the final crowns on these two teeth. This will be posted in DentistryMasterClasses.com. So you can go to this link and see the endodontic procedure on those teeth. Now this is radiosurge. 
You want to be very judicious with radius search. When do you use radius search? When there's gingival tissue over the margin and you don't feel like you can get a good impression of that margin. You don't want to go deep into the junctional epithelium. You want to use just a just a little bit just to trim it back so that you can capture a good impression of the margin. It's in a case where you're not going, it's just not in the cards practically to go in and do full-blown periodontal surgery with osseous removal and gingivectomy. This is when you need just a little bit of room to really capture that margin. And that tissue will heal, it'll grow back beautifully. There's not a problem there. But don't overdo it, just a little touch. And then I'm freshening that margin after the gingivectomy. You can see I've just barely kind of trimmed that back. It's as much a horizontal uh, trimming of the tissue as vertical. I'm freshening those margins with my flame shaped diamond and my fine small chamfer diamond. Checking the occlusal reduction, I want to be sure the top of these preps, this is how much tooth uh, was decayed, are flat. I don't want this to be a point, I want, to be, I want it to be flattened. You can see I've just trimmed that back just a little bit so I've got access to that margin. We're using Lux Attempt to fabricate a provision restoration and you can go to that link in dentistrymasterclasses.com on how to do this. Be sure the teeth are wet, wet, wet when you squirt that bisacrylate on the teeth. Then I'm using Luxabite to block out the interproximal areas of the teeth so the the polyether impression material doesn't lock into the teeth. Then we place the cord around the teeth very lightly in the sulcus. Don't jam it in there, it just needs to open the sulcus. Then we're going to use a poly, polyether with custom tray, how to take the most accurate impression uh, impressions and I love polyether with a custom tray or many of you have never even heard of reversible hydrocolloid deadly accurate. The thing I like about reversible hydrocolloid is it does not stretch when you take it out of the mouth. It just pops out of the mouth. So the margins, uh, the capturing of the margins is deadly accurate, but you've got to have uh, certain trays and hoses and you run water through the tray. But if you invest the little bit in the trays, the material is fantastic. So we take, in a case like this, we'll take a uh, polyether with custom tray and a reversible hydrocolloid impression. Remember this, if you're using polyether or polyvinyl siloxane, you must use a custom tray, period. Don't fill the tray up with unset material and put it on the teeth and expect to get a good impression. You're going to have voids and blibs and uh, it's not going to be as accurate because there's too much unset material. This limits the amount of unset material, plus it forces the unset material down into the sulcus to capture the margins beautifully. So you must use a custom tray if you're using polyether or polyvinyl siloxane. I like polyether because it's hydrophilic. It likes water. We're working in a wet environment. Polyvinyl siloxane does not like water. It's hydrophobic. So I can't understand why somebody would use polyvinyl siloxane versus polyether since the environment is wet. So I'm squirting the unset polyether body material into the impression, the custom tray, and then I'm coming back and squirting the wash material into the tray. Now sometimes I'll squirt the wash material into the teeth if there are any lugs or grooves in the teeth, but many times I won't. I'll just squirt it onto the unset uh, polyvinyl siloxane. Now in this case, I have squirted it onto the teeth. What I like is you can take your air water syringe and rinse the teeth really well once you remove the cord because water doesn't affect polyether. You just want to be sure there's no set blood or scabbed blood on the teeth that if the blood is serous and flowing, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's uh, not set, then that's fine. 
and then you can just leave it wet and squirt the wash material on the tooth, on the prep teeth. Then push that to place and you can just feel the force of that custom tray forcing that impression material down into the sulcus to capture those margins. And you won't have that if you don't have a custom tray. They're just deadly accurate margins, these two teeth. Now this is a reversible hydrocolloid. I think a lot of the, the companies that make this give you free or make you a really good deal on the trays and the hoses. I always take two impressions of any crown. If we're just doing one crown, I take two reversible hydrocolloid impressions. If we're doing two or more crowns in an arch, we take a, a polyether with custom tray and a reversible hydrocolloid impression. The reason we have two is just to have two. It's not all riding on one impression. And I check them carefully and they should be ideal each time. But you can use the reversible hydrocolloid as a solid model for perfect for perfecting the interproximal contacts. You have to pour the reversible hydrocolloid within a couple of hours of taking the impression. You can pour the polyether with custom tray up to two weeks later, so, and you can pour it multiple times. The reversible hydrocolloid, you can only pour one time. But the main thing is they're both deadly accurate. In my opinion, the reversible hydrocolloid is the most accurate but it won't capture a deep margin because it can tear. The reason I think it's the most accurate, according to the studies, polyether and reversible hydrocolloid are neck and neck. The reason I feel like the, the reversible hydrocolloid is the most accurate is it doesn't stretch at all when you take it out of the mouth. It just pops up. See how accurate those margins are. Now I'm taking a polyvinyl siloxane occlusal registration record and you place this material only between the prepped teeth, only between the teeth that have been prepped. If you place it between teeth that have not been prepped, it'll open the bite a little bit and your crowns will be a little bit high. In the same vein, it's very important that you trim the bite material because if you, if you don't, the models won't seat completely in the bite material and the crowns will be a little bit high. Now I'm just adjusting the occlusion on the restorations, wiping them with tubelicid red before I seat the provisional crowns using that Olympia cement that's very good for provisional crowns. And again, you want to let the provisional cement set initially, not hard hard, but initially before you remove the excess. And just popping the floss between there. There's the temporary crowns and then the final seated restorations here and here. Now this one, this one, and this one. So that's the Dental Minute. These techniques work and they work every time. Please click on the blue link in the description below and subscribe to DentistryMasterClasses.com. There's a video library of multiple restorative cases, endo cases, full mouth reconstructions, increasing vertical dimension and full mouth reconstruction, TMJ, myofascial pain, surgery, wisdom teeth, apicoectomies, you name it. Subscribe to DentistryMasterClasses.com.